The very first thing you'll notice about Xcode 14 is that it went on a bit of a diet. By default, it doesn't include the watchOS and tvOS stuff. You just get iOS and macOS SDK. Now, of course, you can check the boxes and install those, but if we're being truthful here, just between me and you, most developers aren't working with the watch or the tvOS. So why include that in everyone's Xcode? So that's how we got that 30% savings and a much lighter download for Xcode. The first new feature of Xcode 14 I wanna show you is a very nice quality of life improvement. As you can see on my screen, I have a crap ton of icons. Now what we can do, instead of having to create all these different sizes in like a design tool and bring them in, over here on the right, you can see you have iOS, all sizes, still says Xcode 13, because I guess there's maybe a slightly different version for Xcode 14, but if you go to single size, you'll notice, as long as you have the 1024 point icon, Xcode will automatically scale it down to all those other ones that you saw before. So instead of having all those icons, now you just need this uh, 1024 point one and you're good to go. Quick note that, like I said, uh, Xcode just scales it down. So some apps will use, you know, different versions of their icon for the super small, like 32 by 32 version, just to make it more visual. So if your app icon is like that, you might not benefit from this, but I would argue most people's app icons can just be scaled down. So again, huge quality of life improvement. Moving on to SwiftUI previews. First of all, they are live by default. You don't have to hit like a play button or a run button, so they will update live. That is by default. But the big thing, again, huge quality of life, is the variance button that you see down here, this little grid looking thing. So if you click on it, you can see you can click color scheme variance, and now look at my preview. Right, you get the light and dark mode side by side, just like that. And you can click on one of them to make it bigger. There's a little back button up here to go back. Click the light one if you wanna really dive in. Cool, so I can see light and dark mode. Orientation variance, nice. I can see portrait, landscape left. Well, if I make it bigger here, or I can zoom out of my preview, either way. Cool, I can see landscape right. Again, orientations, just like that. Now the really cool one, dynamic type variance. You're gonna see, we're gonna get a bunch. So you can see how your view will look with all the different dynamic type settings, just like this. Now, of course, before, you could add modifiers to your previews to show the different variants and have a bunch of different previews up there. This is just so much nicer. In the click of a button, you can see all the variants and see what kind of work you have to do for these super duper large sizes. Now for some code editor improvements here. So I'll make my preview smaller now because that's not important. Uh, the first quick and easy thing I wanna show you, as you can see, we're in a settings view. I'll make my code a little bigger so you can see it. By the way, I know there's many improvements I can make to this setting screen in the code. That's not what this video is about, so. Keep your comments to yourself. <laughs> I know there's issues. Anyway, we're in the settings view, but as you can see, we get the sticky headers. So bam, settings view stuck to the top. And here's where it's good because right, my var body sum view, there's a lot of stuff going on in it. So you can see, I know that now I'm in var body sum view. As I'm scrolling down, I'm still in var body sum view because there's a lot going on, still going. And then now we see we have a sign out of Google function here. So now that pins to the top. So that is sticky headers, a nice way to know where you're at in your file. Another nice thing, if you do Command Shift L to open up your library, and over here on the right, you see SF symbols, this little star here. SF symbols are built into your library now. I don't know about you, I always would have to go Command Space, you know, SF symbols, open up the app like you see here, scroll through, find them. It's just a lot of extra steps. Now again, Command Shift L, pull up your library, hit the little star, and they're searchable too, so I can do sun, Right, I can see all the different sun and stuff like that. So nice to be built right into the library. Again, Command Shift L, hit the little star and you get all your SF symbols. And another little thing, and I don't wanna like discredit the little things, right? Cause all these little, again, quality of life, I feel like I've said quality of life so much in this video, but all those little quality of life improvements like really add up to a better experience. And another one here is in our simulators, right? You click on iPhone 14 Pro, you know, you've had all these simulators, you know, and if you have watchOS and tvOS, you got even more. So this is nice. We have this recent section up here. So if you're bouncing between, like in this case, you know, hey, I was testing the iPhone 8 and then the iPhone 14 Pro, your recent simulator is going to be right up there, which is, uh, again, a nice improvement. And we can now see test flight feedback right in Xcode. So if I go to Windows, Organizer. Now this is over here. Well, feedback, I already have it highlighted. Spoilers. Uh, you know, we used to be able to see crashes, all this stuff. Now I can go to feedback and I can see, I'll make this bigger here. Uh, all my test flight feedback right in here in Xcode. And you see if I click on something uh, over here on the right, I can email Jason Mitchell. But yeah, you can see all of your test flight feedback right from here with screenshots, email the user. Normally you'd have to go to App Store Connect and in test flight and dig for that. Now it's all right here. You also have the hangs, that is new. Now I don't have any hangs here. Well, hangs, hang logs are not available for Mac OS. So I'm on, I'm on the Mac OS version. If I go to creator view, iOS, I don't think there's any hang log detected. I'm sure creator view does have hangs, but here's a screenshot uh, from the WWC video of what it would look like with hangs that you can diagnose. Again, this is all new in the uh, organizer right here in Xcode.
Okay, we'll close that and back to the code here. We're gonna talk about some autocomplete stuff here. So I made some room as you can see. So now we get a lot of boilerplate code done for us, like memberwise initializers or codable conformance. So let's say we have a you know video object. This is just a real quick dummy object. Bar title, which is a string, bar date, which is a type date, bar is live stream, which is a Boolean var note, which is a string. Now with these basic structs, typically you get the memberwise initializer for free, but sometimes you need to type it out. So you would do init and then, you know, anyone that's been developing <laughs> iOS for a while has typed this out thousands of times manually. Now we get that for free. Same thing with like codable conformance. So we'll conform video to codable and then you just start typing uh, decoder right here. And you see, you get the little curly braces with the dot, dot, dot. Now you get all this stuff in there. And then same thing with type uh, encoder, bam. And then now you also, when you do both of them, you get the coding keys. So like I said, there's just a lot of boilerplate stuff that again, if you've been coding for a while, you've typed this out manually plenty of time. The last thing I wanna talk about in this section is the auto completion of parameters. Let me get rid of all this codable stuff just to declutter the screen and not be so confusing. So, you know, a title for video is cool, a date for video, a live stream, most of it's not gonna be a live stream. So we can set a default value to false. And then a note, most of them aren't gonna have notes. So we'll have a default value of a string. So now let's say we had a, a function here. Again, dummy dummy code here. Funk create. And in here, we're going to create a video. So let video equal. And then we'll initialize a video here. Now you can see down here in this one, uh, is live stream a note is kind of grayed out and italicized. So if I just hit return, because those have default values, bam, I just get title and date. But if I go back here, what if I did want those values? There's a couple ways to do this. So video and then... If I hold option, you'll see they light up and I'll get them all. So if I hold option, hit it, get them all, cool. Now, another way to do this real quick, and this is really gonna come in handy in SwiftUI, which I'll show you in a second. But if you do video, cool, is live stream and note are, are optional. But if I start typing is live stream, you see that will light up. And if I start typing note, that will light up as well. So now I'll get them all. Now, that may seem like a, a contrived example when you're initializing those, but let me get rid of all this and go back to SwiftUI. And this is where this is gonna be such a lifesaver. So, back up here onto this list here for the settings view. I'm gonna code fold it so you don't get distracted by all the messiness going on in there. So look, on this list, right, a, a common thing we do in SwiftUI is dot frame. Of course, if you're dealing, dealing with like min width, max width, there's a whole bunch of them, but this is where it's nice where you can type it, like I said. So if I did frame, uh, again, you could hold option to get all of them. Most likely you're not gonna want all of them, but if you just start typing, you know, min, max you see min width and max width lit up i can hit return min width max width <laughs> i know if you've been dealing with swift ui for a while you've had to type that out manually because you didn't want all those parameters so that is nice and then an even quicker one right so dot say i just want to have the width of a frame so dot frame i don't want width and height so just start typing width bam frame width and you got your frame so like i said swift ui modifiers with a ton of optional parameters you know this is very common in swift ui this typing out which parameters you want you don't have to type it all out you just have to type a letter of it so you see i just typed a w and then maybe another w so now i'm getting how it's going through the third w so i got min width ideal width max width so there's different letter combinations you can type to get what you want you'll have to experiment with that trial and error with that but that is gonna be such a time saver for Swift UI. And then the last thing I wanna show you is the build timeline. So you can diagnose, you know, why is my build taking so long? You can really check it out in a visual manner. So before I do that, I'm gonna do a Command Shift K. Maybe even just be Command K, I don't know, whatever. Clean my build folder, product, perform action, build with timing summary. So you click that, it'll build. Over here on the right, we'll click this to see our latest build. So you see 917 build is currently working. Once that is done building, I will show you the timeline summary. Okay, so the build at 9.17 a.m. is done. We click on it. I'm gonna collapse all this stuff real quick just so you can get the summary here. So this is like the build, right? Building all the targets, building all the, the packages and stuff like that, minimizing these so you can help or see it. Okay, so that's like the overall summary. Now, I don't see my, my build timeline right now. It may show up by default for you, but if you uh, right click, show in timeline, Okay, put this on the right, depending on your monitor setup, maybe you want it below, maybe you want it on the right. Um, I guess this is big enough, I can have it on the right. When I was testing this on my laptop, I just had to, had to put it below. But you can see the timeline and it is in milliseconds right now. If you hold option and kind of scroll in your mouse wheel, you can kind of zoom in and zoom out as I'm doing it here. So instead of milliseconds here, let's do you know by the second, right? Or you can keep zooming in maybe every five seconds, right? That'll really put up the summary of your build. But you can look and see like what is taking so long to build or you know if, if something is egregious, something is really uh, out of whack. Like sometimes your, your asset catalog can be like super duper long. But anyway, you can see the build of your timeline to again, diagnose any issues you have and optimize your build times. Those are the highlights of Xcode 14 that I thought you would use you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, there are tons more changes. I'll link to the release notes in the description. Check those out if you want. We'll see you in the next video.